Back, the Federal Reserve wraps up a two-day policy meeting today. Investors await any hints of a rate hike and when that may be. Earlier this month, Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen emphasized she expects the central bank to start raising interest rates at some point before year end. What does it mean for the banking sector? Joining me right now is BNC Bank Corp CEO Rick Calicut, along with a longtime financial services investor, Menden Capital's Anton Schutz. Good to see you both. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. What are you expecting from the Fed this afternoon? Anton. Well, I, you know, I think the Fed is, is really trying to set everybody up for this rate rise. They want their tools back. They've only got one tool right now, which is, you know, buying bonds they are not doing any longer. They want to be able to cut rates, so they want to start raising them. <laughs> I mean, I know it sounds crazy, <laughs> yeah. but they want to have that tool back. They want it back in yeah. the toolbox. So I, I think they badly want to get the first one out of the way. I'm still in, in September. I mean, even all the crazy macro stuff we've had. Market's still okay. Well, that's the and- thing, the crazy macro stuff. I mean, Mark Lucini, we were talking earlier, you're expecting a 2.4% growth number out of the GDP. Is that the kind of growth that would actually justify the Fed raising rates in September? I think it's sufficient. I think the Federal Reserve has set a fairly low economic bar for raising interest rates. Uh, in fact, Janet Yellen, in the last couple of weeks, speaking publicly, has so much as said that uh, a signal to the economy that at least it doesn't stink warrants the Fed raising interest right. rates. So high praise indeed for the economy. Economy, that it just doesn't stink is enough for the that's, Fed to get in the lift your off. Word. Yeah. <laughs> that's my word for television, Maria. Yeah. I have a whole like yeah. dictionary of word of verbs. How, how does higher rates impact your business? In right. the short term, uh, higher interest rates for us as a community bank mean, you know, a little asset sensitive. We're not going to see, uh, you know, improving, ramping profits immediately. More particularly in the community bank space and the smaller community banks, they've had to put a lot of duration in their loan portfolio on the fixed rate side. They're going to see better profits next year, but the year after, there's a crest there. And they're all, they're all concerned about that, as they should be. Mm-hmm. Size matters in this bank space these days. Yeah, that's why you've been acquiring. Absolutely. You've done, you said, what, 13 transactions? 13 transactions since 2010. And so growth comes organically or from more deals in the next few years? We've positioned our company in five of the best growth markets in the southeast, uh, in North Carolina, South Carolina, and now our most recent entree into the Virginia market. And having done that, we've had organic growth. So we're worried about net interest margin, but we're more worried more about net interest income. So we've been able to outrun the, the, the margin uh, issues. Others haven't been able to do that. They're locked into one or two markets in the community bank space, and they live and die by the plant either opens or the plant closes or the gas price goes up or it doesn't. So, you know, again, to compete, they've had to put more longer-term, lower-rate durations because the cycle has been so long. So it's going to be very difficult for them. If you're an investor, because there were were hundreds of these smaller deals last year, Anton, how do you play that trend? Because you can't... Like a lot of the, I mean, some of these companies are, are publicly traded, but right. you, this is in a space where these are privately owned. Yes, yeah, some of them are privately owned. You're exactly. Right. So there, there's two ways for me to play as an investor. First of all, I can own him, and I do, uh-huh. because he's able to do deals that are friendly for his own shareholders as well as paying the shareholders of the bank he buys. So you'll benefit as that company gets gr- bigger and bigger. Exactly. You know, his, his earnings per share go up, his book value may go up. His company gets more valuable. He crosses $5 billion in assets, which he's just done. He's on the radar screen of bigger banks to go, gee, and that gives him better currency it means he can pay better prices for other things he wants to buy. It's a nice cycle, and you know, he's in a good spot because he can buy and you know, create value, justify his independence. But he's worth a lot of money, which is also really nice. Mm-hmm. We're pretty bullish on the banking sector in general. One of our favorites is regional banks. Uh, PNC right. is one of our holdings, in fact. Mm-hmm. Uh, we like the fact that the Federal Reserve may prospectively raise interest rates and help out their net interest margin. In the meantime, they're making a lot of money in the fee-based side of it. Absolutely. And as well, they're benefiting from a lift in economic activity. Do these things translate down to the community bank level as well as they do to the, you know, certainly the money centers, but more so those super regional banks? The only banks with scale really get the benefit from that. You know, I have a mortgage division in our company, and we'll do about $600 million in mortgage business. Fifteen years ago, every community bank had a little small mortgage division they could operate efficiently, they could make money, augment their fee income. It doesn't exist anymore. They can't afford it. They can't afford the regulatory issues that go along with it, the monitoring, the compliance, and all that sort of thing. So until you get some scale where you can afford an SBA division, a mortgage division, a leasing division, you know, those sorts of things, they're nice to have. You can talk about them, but they're not meaningful to your bottom line. They're still living off margin. They're going to live and die by margin. You, you spoke to the KBW audience yesterday, the, the banking conference that you uh, presented at, what was your big takeaway for investors? 
Uh, I think the big takeaway is that we still have a lot of runway left in terms of, of growth in the M&A side. M&A is, is, is about 5-6% uh, now as opposed to normalized historic 3.5%. So we're seeing continued pickup there. I'm continuing to see boards and CEOs who are seeing this vision in the future of how am I making money in this business right. to be more difficult. So they're going to have to make some very tough decisions there. On the other side of it, in North Carolina in particular, soon to be the sixth largest state. A lot of growth. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll leave it there. Anton Schutz, BNC Bank Corp CEO, Rick Calica. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll see you soon, gentlemen, and we'll be right back.